of the saints and you know that it's working together for your good and just concentrate on the fact that you know that God is working it out. Okay, so the next scripture would be 1 Corinthians 14 verse 14 through 15. For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit pray it, but my understanding is unfruitful. What is this then? I will pray with the spirit and I will pray with understanding also. I will sing with the spirit and I will sing with understanding also. Okay, so here we see, I will pray in the unknown tongue and I will pray the word. I will pray in the unknown tongue and I will pray the word. At that time when I'm praying in, in the unknown tongue, my mind doesn't have a clue of what I'm talking about. But however, when I pray the word, I can follow along in agreement. So I will sing in the spirit and I will sing with understanding also. So praying in the Holy Ghost and praying, praying in the Holy Ghost and praying the word is beneficial. So that's why you should just concentrate on the fact that this is working together for my good. And if it's working together for your good, then it's necessary. Hallelujah. Praying always. Okay, go to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Persevering. Not giving up, not being weary, pressing on in the spirit. I trust God. Bottom line, I trust God. And I, I'm not going to make light of some people because I, I know this is a struggle for some people in terms of praying, praying in the Holy Ghost. But I trust God. I believe God. When the Bible says, forbid not speaking in tongues, that should comfort you right there. Forbid not speaking in tongues. So this is necessary, but to come to a prayer meeting or having a prayer meeting and for a person to feel uncomfortable because you're praying in tongues, you're at a prayer meeting. It's a prayer meeting. Shouldn't we allow the Holy Spirit to pray those things for us that we do not understand? So allow the Holy Spirit to do what Holy Spirit has to do. Trust God. And if God wants you to have an interpretation of what's being said, pray for that. Ask God to give you an interpretation of what's being said. But if you listen to what's being said in with the understanding when the word is going forth, there's an interpretation right there. That could be your interpretation right there of what's going on in the word with understanding. You see? So pay attention to what's being said with the understanding and trust God when you're praying in the spirit that God is working everything out for your good. Amen. So go to Acts chapter 2, verse 4. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Again, they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. They were all filled. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And begin to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Who gave the utterance? What were they filled with? They were filled with the Holy Ghost. Who gave them utterance? Hmm? The Spirit gave them utterance. And they began to do what? Speak in tongues. So therefore we trust God that this is working together for our good. Acts chapter 8 verse 14 through 17. When the apostles, which were at Jerusalem, heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John, who, when they were come down, prayed for them and that they might receive the Holy Ghost. For as yet he was not fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. So here we see that these were baptized in the name of Jesus, but because 
they they had Jesus had not been glorified yet they had not received the baptism of the Holy Ghost so they laid hands on them and they received the baptism of the Holy Ghost that is one example but there's another example where they heard there were some who heard just the gospel of Jesus Christ preached and then the Holy Ghost fell upon them so God can move any way he chooses to just know that the Holy Ghost is good and is beneficial because remember, the Lord himself is the spirit. And God is not giving you a snake. God is not giving you, you ask for the spirit of God. He's not giving you a serpent instead. Okay. He's giving you the Holy Ghost. Okay. So glory to God, you trust God is faithful. You trust that God loves you and you respect and give honor to the Holy Ghost. Because the Bible says, wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be, listen, wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin, all manner of sin can be forgiven, but the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven. So whoever speaketh the word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him. Neither in this world, neither in the world to come. So therefore, if you don't understand what's going on, it's beneficial for you to pray and ask. Go to the Word of God and say to Father, Father, you know what? I'm struggling with this. I'm struggling with this. I don't understand what's going on. I'm having trust issues here. Can you please help me, Lord? And you know, I remember, I remember when I went to a meeting once and the power of the Holy Ghost hit in that place and the people were touched with Holy Ghost joy and laughter. And there was a manifestation of laughter in that meeting. I had never attended a service where laughter hit, where the oil of laughter hit. But I prayed and I said, Lord God, if this of you is of you, I would like it. I would like to experience this. And God touched me with the power of the Holy Ghost. And I received the oil of gladness and began to laugh and laugh. And such a burden lifted off of me. I have never suffered with depression since. So the oil of gladness is a manifestation of the joy of the Lord, which is our strength. And so we have to take the time to open up the gift. Open up. If, if someone gave you a gift, and you just put that gift on the table and you never took the time to open that gift up, who's at fault? The person who gave you the gift or the person who didn't take the time to open it up? Okay, so pray, go to God's word, get encouraged by what is written in the word of God and this go and just go for it. Hallelujah, just go in, receive, receive. Begin to tarry and receive. Just begin to go in praise and thanksgiving and ask God for it and believe that he heard your prayer and believe that the manifestation of it will take place. Hallelujah. Because remember, they are all filled with the Holy Ghost. Praise God. So Ephesians 4.30 tells us, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. Yes, we have a seal on us that will carry us on in, in eternity. So glory to God. That's a wonderful thing to be filled with the power of the Holy Ghost. And it is not to show off. It's not to go out like, I'm praying in the Holy Ghost. I'm praying in the Holy Ghost. No, it's really to allow the Holy Spirit to pray for us in our weakness of not knowing what or how we should pray for it. And trust that the Holy Spirit is praying for us and praying for all the saints. So that is why we pray in the Holy Ghost. Not to show off, but to let the Lord God usher us in. Remember, he gives us utterances. He, the Spirit, fills us up and we begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Praise God. So the next scripture is 1 Thessalonians 5.19. Quench not the Spirit. Quench not the Spirit. Quench not the Spirit. You know, I have a friend. And um, she talked, she told me a testimony of how she was speaking with someone who was filled up with the power of the Holy Ghost. And she received the Holy Ghost on, I think, a prayer call. 
Yeah, a prayer call. So she began to pray in the Holy Ghost. She was so excited. She began to pray in the Holy Ghost. And after she hung up the, after she hung up that prayer call, she called, I believe she said her pastor at that time. And this is not to come against a denomination. I am not going to even mention the denomination, but, uh, she called the pastor and she said to him, I'm, you know, I, I received the baptism of the Holy Ghost and she was so excited. And because this pastor had not experienced it and because this pastor felt some type of way about it, he wanted to discourage her and tell her not to use her gift. He told her, no, you shouldn't be using that. Mm -mm. Don't do that. Mm -mm. You know? And so she, she was so discouraged. And then she mentioned it to her husband and he too agreed with the pastor. Okay, so she put her she put her gift up and didn't experience her gift anymore. And one day, um, years later, years, I forgot how many years she said. I think she said 10. But I met her. I was a uh, uh, I, I spoke yesterday about how God had blessed well the year the day before, how God had blessed us to buy a van and we were taking children to church in this van and everything and and uh she saw a, a sticker, a magnetic a, a sticker, and she uh uh, with about Jesus on that van. So she came and uh, came. She said she struggled with coming up to me. She said she didn't want to come up to me because she thought I was going to be rude to her or whatever. And she said she struggled because the enemy said, oh, that woman don't want to be bothered. But she said she finally came on up to me. And when she came up to me, she said, how, how you doing? And we began to talk and we had church in that parking lot. And I invited her to a prayer meeting. And the, I used to attend this prayer meeting at a, a church called Church uh, Church in the City. Well, it was Christian City Church then, but it's called Church in the City. And they had women's uh, uh, prayer. And I invited her to that prayer meeting. And she came to the prayer meeting. And when she entered the prayer meeting and we were praying in the Holy Ghost, we had a time of understanding of prayer, word, praying the word. And then we went in with the Holy Ghost. So she got filled up again and she used her gift. And from that point on, she never, ever put her gift up on the shelf ever again. So I say that to you because of this scripture. It says, quench not the spirit. First Thessalonians 5.19. Don't let anyone talk you out of your gift. It is beneficial, just like all of the gifts are. Prophesying is a better gift, true enough. But the Word of God also tells us that praying in the Holy Ghost, you build yourself up and you allow Holy Spirit to pray for you when you know not what you should pray for. Okay? So, so um, I think we've been talking a whole lot, so we'll, I'll probably get off now, but... I also want to talk about this too before I go, by the grace of God, glory to God, about the word of God too. Because when you're speaking the word of God, that also goes with praying in the Holy Ghost. So one of the, after you get, after you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, speaking the word, exercising your faith, and praying in the Holy Ghost are just keys that go together. OK, speaking the word, calling things that be not as though they were speaking faith and praying in the Holy Spirit is necessary. So if you're you should you should really meditate on speaking the word of God. Confession, because remember, the word of God tells us we overcome the enemy by the enemy, by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. Speaking the word of God is very necessary. Praying in the Holy Ghost, I believe, is very necessary. Does that mean everyone pray, prays in the Holy Ghost? The Bible said they all were filled with the Holy Ghost. Jesus groaned in the Spirit. You can groan in the Spirit. You can sing in the Spirit. But there should be a time when you can go in and pray in your top secret language that the enemy doesn't know what you're saying. And groaning, he does not know what you're saying. Praying in the Holy Ghost, he does not know what you're saying. But when you pray with the understanding, then he knows what you're saying. So... That's too an incentive to pray in the Holy Ghost. So motivation to pray in the Holy Ghost. So um, the Bible tells us that keep thy tongue from evil. That's Psalms 34, 13. Keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking guile. Okay. And then Ephesians 4, 22, put off concerning the former conversation of the old man, which is a corrupt according to deceitful lust. 
And then again, Ephesians 4.31, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. So, 